The clear soprano voice of Reverend Penny Bridges echoes through the sanctuary of St. Paul's at a Sunday morning service. This church is known for its music. Bridges is the dean, or head pastor, of St. Paul's, and she's been rallying support among congregants for a project she says will expand the church's ministry and give it financial security in the future. We think of ourselves as the spiritual cornerstone of Bankers Hill, and in a way a physical cornerstone too, because the cathedral is such a, a physical statement, and we think that this will enhance our ability to, to serve the neighborhood, the community, as we have done now for 150 years. If the project is approved by the city council, St. Paul's will sell a portion of its land to a developer, Graystar. The developer would then build a high-rise with two floors of commercial space that St. Paul's would own as a condo. Bridges says that would double the church's current office space and provide more meeting space for community groups. The project also includes a courtyard open to the public and, most importantly, 204 apartments. We're very concerned with the housing crisis and um, very pleased to be partnering with, um, with someone who will provide some relief. And obviously, it's a small piece um, of the huge picture, but some relief for the housing crisis and especially some affordable housing for, um, I think the technical term is very low income. Um, residents of San Diego. Those affordable units are a big selling point. Some city council members have chided developers for choosing to pay a fee so they don't have to include low-income homes in their projects. The 18 affordable units in this project would be open to, for example, a single parent with two kids making less than $44,000 per year. One thing I want to say is there's no opposition here to the density. We welcome more people. It helps our business district. It does a lot of things. Leah Wilson is the chair of Uptown Planners, the volunteer community planning group. He says the proposed building's height, 223 feet, is excessive. And actually one reason they're so high is there's a lot of luxury units up there. There's going to be a sky lounge, a pool. You know, they could reduce this building to, say, 170 or somewhere around then. And they'd only lose 22 units, and they could put those lower and, you know, actually provide a better housing mix as far as affordability. Wilson and other opponents to the project say the building's height would cast a longer shadow over a strip of Balboa Park than some of the neighboring high-rises in Bankers Hill. You know, it, it wasn't height for height's sake. I mean, the, the height of this building serves, you know, a number of very important uh, purposes. Omar Rawi of Graystar says the building's tall and slender design actually minimizes the shadow cast over Balboa Park. And he says the planning group's counteroffer of a 170-foot height limit is arbitrary. It's difficult to have an arbitrary number as your starting point in any sort of discussion over compromise. And I think secondarily, you know, we recognize the critical need for housing and, in fact, affordable housing in this community. At 170 feet, we wouldn't be able to build any affordable housing on site. Rawi adds keeping the same number of apartments in a shorter building would also mean trade-offs they just can't live with. We'd lose the courtyard. Um, the, the, the impact to the cathedral would be profound. As I mentioned, alternate massings cr actually create more shadow impacts on the park than the building that we've proposed. So the trade-offs you know, on bringing the height down are just far too great. To, to us, it just doesn't make sense. The city council is scheduled to vote on the project next Monday. As the church service ends, Reverend Bridges encourages congregants to show up and urge the city council to approve it. Andrew Bowen, KPBS News.